up, soldiers. While we're out here, you will be taking all commands from the tower. And I am the tower. Do you understand? Yes, I do. Welcome to the tower. Your dose of military news delivered with an infernal edge. My name is Magister Campbell, and today we are discussing a conscientious objector who is risking jail time. Thai conscientious objector risks jail in rare refusal of military service. This is from The Guardian by Rebecca Ratcliffe, Sunday, 21st, April 2024. Young men are forced to take part in conscript lottery, but the rich often avoid serving in the army. Every April in Thailand, young men take part in a lottery to determine whether they will be forced to do military service. Pull out a red card and you're drafted for up to two years. A black card means you are exempt. When it was Nedewit Chodafet Faisal's turn to draw a card this month, he refused, making a rare protest as a conscientious objector. If prosecuted, it is believed he could become the first person in Thailand to be imprisoned for avoiding the draft through civil disobedience. The offense carries a maximum sentence of three years. Quote, I am very anxious. When I'm sleeping, I'm thinking about whether I have to go to jail. I observe a lot of things. I already have a business now. I will lose everything. Nedewit 27 told the Observer, but he added, I think someone has to do this to show that we have a problem. Nedewit said the system was outdated, ineffective, and unfairly affected the poorest who were less well-placed to find ways to avoid the draft. It was also, he said, part of a wider system that undermined the country's democracy. The prominent activist first announced his objection to military service as a teenager after the military seized power in a coup in 2014. It was only last year that the former coup leader, Prayuth Chan Ocha, had later become prime minister, left office, after his party suffered a humiliating electoral defeat. Military service brainwashes people, Nedowit said. I think the military service is one thing that holds our country to be ruled by the military. Move Forward, a youthful pro-reform party, won most votes in last year's election, but was blocked from power by military-appointed senators, and so a coalition was formed between Tho Tai, the party of ex-leader Taksin Shinawatra, and its former enemies in pro-military parties. The concept of being a conscientious objector is relatively new in Thailand, according to Panawat Panduprasarat, a political science professor at Chiang Mai University. This is partly because older generations were less likely to perceive the obligation as a violation of their rights, or to want to risk protesting against the military, he said. There are also many ways, legal and illegal, for people to avoid military service, provided they have the resources. One of the most common options is to take a military training course for one day a week during secondary school. This option is not available to all students, however. Students have to have a qualifying exam, said Panawa. In practice, it turns out the system is biased towards students from prestigious schools. People can also be exempt on military grounds or if they become a monk of a certain rank. Others use illegal means such as bribery. The system was stacked against the poorest, said Nedowit, with those who were forced to serve losing jobs or career opportunities. Past research by Amnesty International found evidence that new conscripts face violence, humiliation, and sexual assault with LGBT conscripts particularly vulnerable. High-profile deaths in training camps have also raised questions about their treatment. Last year, eight military personnel were jailed for wrongful exercise of duties and negligence after the torture and killing of a conscript in 2011. Defense Minister Su Tin Klung Seng said that these incidents are rare. Such cases have, however, added to pressure of reform. Last month, the hashtag end mandatory conscription went viral on social media after a move forward MP, T. Sun Chunhaven, called on the army to investigate the suicide of a conscript who had previously worked as her assistant. Before his death, he had told her that he was stressed and had been ordered to sweep the floors and mow the lawn of his commander's house. The army denied there was a connection between his death and treatment as a conscript. Later, a naval conscript posted a widely shared video about how he had been ordered to do household chores for his officer, including washing underwear, cleaning the dishes, and clearing away bottles of alcohol. In the past, people were less likely to openly criticize the military, said Nedowit. People didn't dare to talk like this in public because they think they will be in trouble. Today, the situation has changed, he added, referring to youth-led mass protests in 2020 that not only called for reform from the military, but also broke a deeply ingrained taboo and criticized the monarchy. All right, here's my thoughts. There's a lot in this. Um, a lot of this is going to be, of course, 
we are in the U.S. and this is in Thailand, so it's not apples to apples. But conceptually, there are some points I want to bring up that I found interesting. My soldier, when I was uh, serving in the U.S. Army, was a conscientious objector serving in the military. Conscientious objecting typically means they don't want to go to combat because they're, you know, they just can't bring the idea of killing another human for any reason. It just goes against their personal morals or their own conscience. And so that's why most people refuse to either, if they are set to be deployed, if they're actively in the military service, why they declare themselves as a conscientious objector. But in some cases, it's just they didn't want to do military service in the first place. They just object to the concept of it. Now, this is going to lead into a broader understanding of the way I think the world should work, which, you know, who cares what I think? But I think, honestly, there are countries around the world that do this properly. Now, pressing military service, the reality is, is it's not for everyone. I mean, in our country, we don't have a draft. And... What it does is it provides people who want to serve, who want that opportunity um, to go in and enjoy the benefits of service and the skills they learn as a soldier benefit them greatly in their wider life. But yes, there are abuses and there are issues that need to be addressed. That's typically only done from the inside, however, because from the outside, you have no authority. You have no control. The military governs itself. So you have to have people on the inside working for these reforms because there are going to be assholes like these uh, commanders making them do household chores and washing their underwear and stuff if there's no oversight or if there's no uh, uh, transparency through service. But I still think service to one's country is important. Not so that you can be brainwashed. This whole idea that the military brainwashes people is so absurd. Yes, you learn skills. You get a broader viewpoint of the world, which will change you. But that's not brainwashing. I remember when my son signed up for the um, Marines. Everyone was so afraid. Oh, the Marines, they brainwash you more than any other service. And he's not going to be the same person. No, he's the exact same person. He just went through a different training than other military service members did. It didn't brainwash him into becoming some sort of automaton or robot. He just sees the world in a slightly different way because he went through something that most people don't. And that's the exact same thing with uh, this individual, Netowit, and in his country. Because he's on the outside, he thinks the military is one thing, but it is usually not. And yes, you do have those sort of one-off abuses and horrible situations that get dealt with ultimately, as is noted in this article, but those are rare, and you get more out of military service, especially depending on what you put into it, based on your perception going in, how you decide to act while you're in, the opportunities that you seize on, you, you can actually do really, really well for yourself. And that doesn't mean you have to be a lifelong soldier. Two years is nothing. It's literally nothing. Two years of your life as a grown-up flies by in the blink of an eye. And the benefits that you get and your country get from having a mandatory service is invaluable. Not only does it give an educated citizen base who understand what it means to serve, that broadens everyone's perspective and it encourages you to then engage with your democracy and your government. And that's a good thing because in a vacuum, the government will run away with your rights. If you are involved in it, you can protect those rights. And this speaks to a larger conversation. Uh, we don't have an active draft. We really don't need to worry about this at all. But opinions change and humans evolve. So if you want to have rights in a country, if you see yourself as a democracy, you have to fight for those rights. How do you think that fighting is done? By the military. This idea that individuals shouldn't have to contribute to the greater society while benefiting from all of the privileges and rights that society provides is asinine to me. You have to step up and you have to give back to what you are taking from this society. Now, this is all the world around. 
This, I, I think this should be 100% mandatory everywhere. Everyone should have to provide some form of a service. It doesn't have to be military. Maybe it's working at a hospital. Maybe it's working at a, a public library or, or a post office or something. But you should have to serve the greater community that you exist in, that you're getting benefits from, in order to pay back for those. Now, we do that in the United States in the form of taxes, but we basically say, hey, if you just happen to be born on this piece of earth, you know, swirling through the universe, well, that makes you special. And you get all of these rights simply because you exist in this one little piece of dirt. You got to earn it. I, we end up with a country like we have right now, bitterly divided over ridiculous notions of left and right, while both of them are completely controlled by corporate interests. We are the tail wagging the dog. We are fools hopping through flaming hoops in the circus while our government is printing money, stealing our taxes, giving it away to other countries. We are blinded by this simply because we don't have mandatory service, in my opinion. Because most people don't want to be involved. They don't want to care. They don't want to have to do anything for all of the rights that they're enjoying. This Thai citizen has a country where it forces you to pay attention to it. And they're complaining about it. That's the problem! Now, I agree that you shouldn't have to have military service. Most people cannot physically step up to the demands of a rigorous military lifestyle. People are just simply weak. We have to have worker bees in this world. And some people, like Nedowit, are worker bees. They cannot step up and be soldiers. It is not within them to do that. But, again, he's a worker bee. He has his own company. He is contributing to a society in that way. As long as he's paying taxes, you know, maybe two years of a different type of service or two years of his company serving the greater community at reduced prices or maybe they uh, have a, a, a healthy military uh, discount system, uh, you know, to sort of offset the service. You know, we have to be able to think out of the box instead of just throwing people, you know, on a rifle and saying, hey, go, go fight for two years or go, you know, be a, a service member for two years when that's just not... Every single one of us humans have completely different chemical makeups. We're all humans. We're all born and, and generally look pretty similar. But our biology is slightly different. Our chemistry is slightly different. So we can't expect everyone to fit and behave in the same exact way and fit in the same exact mold. We have to be a little bit more malleable. Now, whether you're talking about um, Thailand or whether you're talking about the United States or anywhere else, we should be using this idea to put people in the correct position. So, for example, going back to the soldier of mine who was a conscientious objector, he was in a support role. And so he wasn't ever going to see battle straight on. Yes, it's possible that he could have been engaged in a firefight or he could have been, you know, found himself uh, sort of behind enemy lines or something because we we're commo and we had to be separate in order to sort of retransmit communications from one position to another. But that's the role you signed up for. Now, I'm a little bit torn because, yes, we did sign up. We did choose to uh, go into the service. But I also recognize that people's understanding of the world changes. Their experiences that they have change them fundamentally. So the person that signed up with the opportunity or the possibility of facing uh, combat may not be the same person when they're finally, you know, years later sent in to combat conceptually, it's one thing. In practice, it's a whole thing other entirely. So I do think that we need to re-examine, you know, maybe stop signing up for five years for a particular job. Maybe make it the maximum of two years. Like you cannot sign up for more than two years at a time so that you understand and you grow and then you make choices based on that and you're not locked into some crazy contract. But again, two years is nothing. So for this individual to just absolutely refuse to even participate in a draft that his government has instituted and yet still is you know, wanting to enjoy the rights of owning and running a business without having paid into the society in any other way, well, that's ridiculous. 
Now, I want to get to uh, my idea here. <laughs> this is, if I had the power, this is what I would do. I would have a two-class system. If you want to enjoy voting, if you want to enjoy all of the rights of a given society, you must serve that society for two years. Now, like I mentioned before, that may be through um, social programs, that may be through um, public service. It doesn't have to be through military, but the military would be one of the options. After that two years, you are a full citizen with full rights. You can vote, you can you know, engage in government if you want to, or just ignore it altogether. You did your duty. Everyone who doesn't step up, you're a second-class citizen. You don't get the right to vote. You don't get all of the rights that that citizen or that uh, country offers because you chose not to contribute. So why should you have all the rights that someone who did contribute has? That's the world I want to live in. It'll never happen because we have too many pussies in this world who refuse to take responsibility for their own actions, let alone the greater community that they're leeching off of. But I can dream. Okay. So I want to talk a little bit about um, the rich being able to get out of this. Now, this is something that we see in government. Um, we see in our legal systems. If you are of means, if you have wealth, then you get to skirt by a government. And this happens when you have money controlling that government. Now, that's clearly a situation with this draft in Thailand, and it's a serious situation with our legal system, our government. I mean, you know, we have people sort of fist pumping the air, uh, wanting to go into wars, and yet their children aren't serving. They never served. That is fundamentally a broken system. That means that if you have money, you don't have to obey the law like everyone else. And that degrades a democracy. That's what we're suffering from right now. And so I understand the plight that uh, Thailand is suffering under the same exact situation. But a democracy isn't easy. A democracy is not something that's built overnight. A democracy is something that evolves over time. And sometimes you have to cleanse it. <laughs> I'm not suggesting that we are in that position at all right now, because I don't think we are, even with as insane as our uh, citizenry is at the moment. But that's the price of a democracy, is constantly reevaluating whether it's working or not and making changes to it when it's not working. And in this particular case with Thailand, this is a, a, a wonderful protest. While I don't like his um, refusal to serve his country, I do like that he is forcing a conversation on a burgeoning democracy. How much influence should the military have in governance? I think that's a very valid question. I think it's something that should be examined. And that's the beauty of a democracy, is that you have your citizens and everyone has a representative and everyone gets to contribute conceptually to how that democracy grows. And that's why it's so important to get money out of politics and not allow corporate interests to take over or uh, control representatives through mass donations and other benefits. I mean... We have to fight for this democracy. We, as Americans, as veterans, as active duty soldiers, we have to take an active interest because serving isn't just enough. We have to then use those rights that we're defending in voting, in using our voice to communicate how we feel about a given situation, a legislation to our representatives about how we feel the democracy is going. We have to vocalize it in a positive way, in a direct way, so that everyone understands if you dissent, you're not just a far lefter or a far right nut job. No, you're a concerned citizen with valid thoughts that need to be considered because you served, you participated in the government and democracy. You're owed your voice to be put on a platform. If you don't participate, then you don't get that right. It's just, it's very simple. So service to one's country, ultimately, in my opinion, builds perspective and gratitude. And change never happens from the outside in. It has to start from the inside. So if he wants to pull the lottery and he gets a black ticket and he doesn't have to serve for two years, awesome, that's great. But you can still use your voice because you participated. By refusing to even participate, to me, 
that tells me you don't get the choice. You don't get the right. So sit on the sideline and shut the fuck up. All right, soldiers, that's all I have for you today. Comedy. Okay.